All right. In this video, we will continue the back propagation derivation. And the first step in back propagation is to compute the error gradient. So we are going to look at two cases where J is an output unit and J is an internal hidden unit. And we are going to compute the error gradient for both these cases. So we already know how the error gradient looks like, right? So we looked at the error gradient for the perceptrons. We also looked at error gradient for the sigmoid function. Now the error gradient has this general form. It is a partial differentiation of the error function with respect to each weight. And we only had weights for each feature before, but now we have weights corresponding to all the edges in the graph. So initially we had all the inputs going to one output node, right? So we only had WIs where I denotes the features. Now we have all the I's going to one output node J, which is here, right? All this features going into this hidden unit or if j is this and corresponding i becomes this guy then all going into this j everything fading into this j right so we have that's why w j i This is what we need to compute. Partial derivative of the error function with respect to each weight, where now weights are in all the edges and they are now quantified by two indices, J and I, where I is the input and J is the output. So for each edge, you can think of this like this. So if for each edge, let's say this edge, if this, this is the edge, I is the node corresponding to the input, J is the node corresponding to the output. If it is this edge, then I is the node corresponding to this input of this edge and J is the node corresponding to the output of this edge. So for any edge, this is how we are going to to look at it and for each of these edge we have to compute a partial derivative because those many weights exist in our model hope that makes it clear okay so now we have a partial derivative of the error function with respect to wji and for each wji we know what j is and what i is that's the starting point and now the next step is we the next step is we split that into two two components now ed is a function of our output right od and od we know is a function of net j and net j we know is a function of wji because we have defined the output of each node what comes out of here that output to be oj j if this is j this is oj and we know that oj is nothing but a sigmoid of net j and we know that net j is nothing but sigma i equal to 1 to n w j i x j i right we know that now that's why e d when we differentiate with respect to w j i so we are just go, let's go back and look at what is ED? So ED is for all output 
we are it's for each example so we are only looking at the true minus the predicted how is square cross all the output so that is given by the error and now we know that the output is a function is a sigmoid on net j and then we know that net j is sigma a weighted sum of um, the inputs so we can decompose this into these two parts differentiation of ed with respect to net j and differentiation of net j with respect to wji right because just from chain rule now for the later part differentiation of net j with respect to wji we know that only term that matters here is the term with wji right so others are all constant because we are differentiating with respect to this term wji and the coefficient of that is xji so which is what is the second term differentiation of net j with respect to wji is equal to xji now we only have the previous term differentiation of ed with respect to net j that we need to derive an expression for and here is where we consider the two cases where j is an output unit and case 2 where j is an internal unit now why are we considering these two cases separately we already mentioned this in when we were introducing back propagation but i would like to remind you that here we are considering these two cases separately because only in the output nodes you know the true value in the internal nodes you don't know the true value but you are going to use the true value in the output to learn the weights when our j is an internal unit because we don't know the true value so we don't know for example a value that comes out of here we know what the value is that we predict but we don't know what it actually has to be because the specific value we don't have the true values for this but on the other hand we do have the true output for the output node so we are going to use this guy this its output to understand the weight for cases where j is an internal unit that's why we are going to do these two cases separately when j is an output unit it's way more straightforward than when j is an internal unit so we are going to look at the case where j is an output unit first case one first and then we'll look at case two okay now so for case one we are now starting with partial derivative of ed with respect to net j so that's what we have still left to compute right now we are going to start with that and then we are going to decompose this into partial derivative of ed with respect to oj and oj with respect to net j this is again chain rule it's very simple uh, if you think about it because we know that ed has the expression of ed has the output o so o is a function is a sigmoid on net and net is a function oh sorry uh, e is a function of o and o is a function of net so it follows very simply from the definition of e right so e d is a function of o and o is a function of net so 
we can decompose it in this fashion. Now the hint says the same thing. WJI influences the network through NetJ. NetJ influences the network through OJ. In other words, ED is a function of OJ, OJ is a function of NetJ, NetJ is a function of WJI, and which is what we will use when we are doing differentiation to do the chain rule, right? So that's what is said here. Okay, so now we consider term one, differentiation of ED with respect to OJ separately. That is nothing but differentiation of half sigma over k belong to outputs dk minus ok the whole square with respect to oj so this is nothing but the function for ed right so we know ed is equal to half sigma k belong to outputs dk minus ok the whole square we know that right so this is what we are substituting here to get this term term one here on top of the left side now for the next step differentiation with respect to oj of this whole thing only makes sense when k is equal to j because for all other k, this is a constant and it will differentiate to zero, right? Only makes sense when for that term where our j in question is equal to k, right? So that is when this will make sense. So there will be only one j, so we are only differentiating with respect to one o j and that only particular OJ term makes sense for us. So the sigma goes away. So when I'm going to move the document down just so you know which I'm referring to. The top on the left now, we have the sigma out. The sigma over K is no longer relevant because there's only one term where K is equal to our node in question J and that is what we have here so notice the difference that we have here is that there is no sigma we have a sigma in the first and then we say that there's only one term that's relevant where our node in question j is the k that we are looking for and now we have this term differentiation over oj half tj minus oj whole square Note that we don't have a summation anymore because we are only interested in that term where we have OJ. So differentiating this, we get minus because OJ has a minus in front, minus half times 2 times TJ minus OJ. Differentiation of half TJ minus OJ the whole square. And now canceling the 2 and we get minus TJ minus OJ. So this is the first part now for term two the term two here i'm going to go up so we can look at term two term two is labeled here is differentiation of oj with respect to net j right so we are going to consider the second term oj with respect to net j make some room here on my right okay so oj to net j now we have oj is nothing but a sigmoid of net j now remember what did we derive as differentiation of sigmoid of x differentiation of sigmoid of x with respect to x we saw that this is nothing but 
sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. Right? So this is what we saw. Differentiation of sigmoid of x with respect to x is coming out to be this. Now, what we have here is very similar, right? So we have differentiation of sigmoid net j, which is nothing but oj, is sigmoid of net j, right? With respect to net j. Now, we know that that is nothing but sigmoid of net j times 1 minus sigmoid of net j, right? From the formula for differentiation of sigmoid of x. So, this is nothing but sigmoid of net j times 1 minus sigmoid of net j, right? Now, sigmoid of net j is nothing but oj, right? So, this is nothing but oj times 1 minus oj, which is what we have on the left in equation number 3. We have oj times 1 of 1 minus oj, so which is what we get. Now, we take everything back. We have solved for all the different terms separately, and we are going to just plug everything back into the equations to get our delta wji so we know that delta wj are the biggest comp component in delta wji which is the weight update right which we derived for all the functions so far perceptron sigmoid and also now for layers of neural network nodes composed of sigmoid Delta WJI or the weight update is nothing but minus eta learning rate differentiation of ED error function with respect to each weight WJI. Now we have all the different components. We are going to plug that back in. And then finally we get this term eta times TJ minus OJ, OJ times 1 minus oj multiplied by xji and that is our weight update wji delta wji when j is an output node so we only derive case one when j is an output node this is our weight update in the next video we will look at case two which is a more interesting case where j is a hidden unit once we have both these pieces, that's when our backpropagation algorithm, weight update algorithm is complete. So this is the first part, case one. In the next video, we will look at the second part. Thank you.